Now we're going to discuss some additional tasks you might need to do if your project involves survey or if it is a longitudinal study. Let's first start with a survey. If the project is a survey, you will see a new link under Data Collection called Manage Survey Participants. Manage Survey Participants gives you two ways to send your survey to your participants. Your project manager will tell you which one you should be using and which forms you should use it for. The first way is using the public survey link. The public survey link is a single link that you can send out to all participants. Responses are collected anonymously and participants are able to take the survey multiple times. To use the public survey link, all you need to do is copy the public survey URL and paste it into your email or post it to the message board or listserv, however you are planning on contacting your participants. If you are working directly with your participant and want to open the survey link for them, you would open the public survey link by clicking on Open Public Survey. This will open the public survey in a new tab. Please note that one of the big differences between using a survey and just using regular data entry is that from the survey there is no access to the rest of the REDCap project. If you simply open a data entry form for a participant, they would be able to navigate away from the data entry form and look at other parts of the project or other participant records. The survey is self-contained. Therefore, if you open a survey for a participant to fill out, make sure that you close out of the regular database. The other way you can distribute your survey to participants is via the participant list. With the participant list, you enter a list of emails that you will send the survey link to. Each participant will get a unique survey link, so they will only be able to take the survey one time. You will also be able to track who has an invitation scheduled, whose invitations have been sent, and who has responded. A green circle with a check means that they have completed the survey, and an orange circle with a check means that they have partially completed the survey. To add participants, go to the Add a Participants button, and simply enter the list of emails one per line. You can copy and paste these from Word or Excel as well. To send a survey invitation, first choose a form that you want from the drop-down menu. Then go to Compose Survey Invitations. Here you can choose whether the survey should be sent immediately or if you want to send it at a specific time in the future. Then you can choose what email address you're going to send the survey from. You can have up to three email addresses associated with your REDCap account. The primary contact should be your institutional email. However, if you have a project email address, you may want these survey invitations to come from that email address instead. Then you'll create the subject line and compose your email. Please note that you can use HTML formatting when you're writing your emails. Finally, you'll want to choose what participants to send the invitations to. There will be a list of all participants who have not yet completed their survey on the right-hand side of the box. You can either check and uncheck individually, or you can use the drop-down menu to check and uncheck groups of people. When you're done, just click Send Emails. To track invitations that you have sent out, go to the Survey Invitation Log. Here, you will see all invitations that are scheduled to go out in the future, and if you click on View Past Invitations, you can see all the survey invitations that you have sent out in the past as well. If you need to open a survey for a participant to fill out, such as in a clinical situation, and you're using the participant list, you'll see a survey link next to the name of anyone who has not finished their survey. If you click on that link, that person's survey will open. That completes things that you might need to do with a survey. Next, we'll look at things you might want to do with a longitudinal project. The difference between a longitudinal project and a classic project is that in a longitudinal project, your project manager will have set up multiple events. For example, you may have an initial check-in and evaluation, and then weeks 1, 2, 3, and 4, followed by a final evaluation, and then a follow-up. Some of those events may need to use the same forms, and so the project manager will have assigned each form to certain events. Longitudinal studies also allow for multiple arms in your study, for example, a control and experimental arms that may not use the same forms and events. 
If you go to the record status dashboard on a longitudinal project, you'll see a different layout. Here you can see all the records in the study, and then you can see each form for each event. You can also see how it separates ARM1 and ARM2. When you are entering records on a longitudinal project, you will still go to Add Edit Records. Here you'll select your ARM, and then you'll select the record. Then there will be one more step you have to take. You will have to choose which event you are in, and then you will have to choose which form that you want to fill out for that event. If your longitudinal project has a set amount of time that needs to pass from one event to another, your project manager may enable the scheduling module. The scheduling module can be found under data collection on the left hand menu. What the scheduling module allows you to do is to add a new record and then choose what the date should be for the very first event. You will place the record in an appropriate arm for the study and then when you click Generate Schedule, REDCap will create a preliminary schedule based on how far apart your project manager told REDCap each event should be. Your project manager will also specify a range of acceptable dates. For example, maybe event 2 needs to happen 10 days after event 1, but it can be plus or minus 2 days. That range will show up underneath the proposed date in the schedule. If a date falls on a weekend, that day will show up in red to draw your attention to the fact you may need to change the date for it. You can make any changes that you need to to the project schedule, even adding in an optional time. You'll also be able to come back and change the schedule at any time. When you're done, you click Create Schedule. Now if you go to the calendar, you will see all the scheduled events for Record 19. Here we can see Record 19, the first event, the initial check-in. When I click on it, I get a pop-up that lets me see the record ID, the event name, which arm I'm in, and then it lets me look at the status. I can change the status from due date to scheduled, confirmed, canceled, or no-show. I can make any changes I need to in the time and add in appropriate notes. If I want to review and edit the schedule, I can go to View Schedule. From here, I can also jump to the appropriate data entry forms for this event. I do this just by clicking on the form name. Thank you very much for completing this REDCap data entry tutorial. Next, you'll be asked to answer a few brief questions and take a short comprehension quiz. After you have passed the quiz, you'll receive instructions on how to create your account. After your account is created, please make sure to give your username to your project manager so that they can add you to the appropriate projects.